The following program is provided for general information only. Younger viewers should check with appropriate professionals or adults to address individual problems, permissions, and concerns. sandwiches. What should I make? Mm, maybe a nice big club sandwich. Ooh, yes. with thick turkey and ooh, lots of bologna and crispy bacon or, or, or fresh lettuce and oh, juicy tomatoes. Oh, no, no. I want something hot. Yeah, like a nice hot fresh carved gyro. Ooh, with a nice warm pita and, ooh, and juicy tomatoes and an extra sauce, but oh, that's too much work. Ooh, ooh, maybe it's soft, creamy PB and J. Yeah, with white bread, with no crust and strawberry, N no grape, grape jelly. Yeah, but oh, that's too simple. Uh, ooh, hot, fresh, gooey cheese steak with with ooh with juicy peppery beef. But oh, cheese. Ooh, cheeseburger, yeah, with extra pickle and lettuce. Mmm, big beefy burger. Oh, but what about my favorite? Hot dogs, yeah. Nice soft bun, hot mustard, onions, ketchup, maybe relish? No, no, chili and cheese, yeah. It's a code red. Guys, we got 314. Snack attack! Sandwiches, in case you didn't notice, aren't quite what they used to be. Today, breads are better, fillings are fabulous, and they're being served up in combinations that are spreading a whole new attitude. Too busy to cook? Watching your budget? Sandwiches are the quick, easy, and endless solution. Now every good sandwich starts with a good loaf of bread. You want your crust to be, well, crusty, and you want the underside of the bread to be slightly springy to the touch. Try to know ahead of time what types of fillings or toppings you're going to use. This can help you figure out what type of bread you need. want your bread to be overpowering the sandwich. It should complement it. Your fillings, be they vegetables or sliced meat, should be spaced evenly or in layers. To prevent a soggy sandwich, seal the inside of the bread with dressing, butter, or margarine on both sides of the bread. 
Sliced meat should be sliced thin. This makes the sandwich more tender to chew. You know, if you like your meat warm, it should be done before it's on the bread. You never want to microwave your bread. That can make the bread rubbery. Try to use fresh ingredients in your sandwiches. Crispy lettuce, firm tomatoes, crunchy pickles, and flavorful mustards to help spice things up. And finally, be experimental. That's really good. Today we're going to be working with a special carbohydrate, a starch that's found in bread dough. You're working with pizza dough. I have an experiment planned for you that has to do with yeast. You see, yeast has a special purpose in bread dough. When it gets with water, it starts feeding on the dough and produces gases, and that's what causes the bread to rise. So Josh, you're going to help me with this experiment. In this graduated cylinder, we have warm water and sugar, and you're going to add the yeast. That sugar will help the yeast activate. Excellent job, thank you. Now we're going to trap that gas that the yeast will produce. Would you put this balloon on the neck of that graduated cylinder? And then we will put tape around the edge so none of that gas escapes. Remember to shake it up a little so all that yeast gets mixed with that warm water. Let's see what happens in about an hour. later and look at all the gas that has produced by that yeast. on Gourmet Cooking School and we're doing the Gourmet Dish of the Day. And I'm here today with Chef John Lewis. Ta-da! Um, and we are making what? I was expecting a drum roll. Oh, okay. All I got was, okay. Uh, we've got Mexican cornbread today. Ooh. Okay, as opposed to, well, we've added some jalapeno in there. Oh. All right, to give it a little spice. And then we're also putting some bacon in there for flavor. So we've got a lot of things going on. And this is a very, very moist cornbread recipe, helped along by the fact that we're using sour cream, eggs, creamed corn, okay, in the wet ingredients. And we've combined all those right here. To look like this. Okay. Um, so you've got eggs, sour cream, you could use yogurt if you wanted to, creamed corn. Get that all well combined. So we're mixing that up. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we've already saw, we've yet. already uh, cooked our bacon. We did this in the microwave, or you could do it on the cooktop, depending upon what you want to do. Next, we want to fold in the dry ingredients. Now, the dry ingredients consist of cornmeal, flour, baking powder, and salt. Okay? okay. Go ahead and get that all stirred in. There you go. Now, you want to combine it until it's just combined. You don't want to overwork it. You know the reason? So it's not overworked. <laughs> Why is the sun up? Because it's up. Okay. Oh, no. But, it, but what's the reason? If you overwork flour, flour contains something called gluten. Gluten? Gluten. Uh -huh. Is that the word of the day? G-L-U-T-E-N. It could be the word of the year for you. Oh. But gluten will make it tough if you get it overworked. So it becomes something tough to eat rather than nice and tender. Like plastic? Uh, more like cardboard. Oh. Okay, let's mix some of the bacon in here. All right. I love bacon. You like bacon? I really do. Yeah. Good. So for these, um, so far we're doing we're doing uh, everything that you like, right? Yeah. All right, it's that's all good. 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 Now in the uh, iron skillet that you have there next to you, and I really like the iron skillet because it's a great thing to bake in and cook in, because it retains the heat so well. So let's bring that over and put it here next to your bowl. Now it's cool, so yeah. Yep. You don't have to worry about it. Yet. 
No, what, two. what we did, no. No, no, no. sorry. <laughs> what we did is we're gonna first, we, we sauteed the red onions and the yes. thyme. Yes. Right, okay. Now why don't you first scrape that into here with your wooden spatula. You don't have to get it all in there. Now just hold it up over the bowl. Okay. There you go. That's all, right, just all of it. All of it? Yeah, but don't be fanatical about it. If some pieces remain, that's fine. Because what's gonna happen is we're gonna mix the batter together and we're gonna go right back into the pan. Oh. Right? Wow, that's kinda cool. Okay. So it's a two pan kinda deal. You don't have to use like much pans. You can keep going back into this pan. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> okay, move it back over here on the granite, please. On the granite, okay. All right. move it. Now, why don't you transfer all this into there, smooth it out. And meanwhile, we preheated our oven to 350 degrees. Which is the time for normal people. Like, if there's no... <laughs> if there's no... If the recipe doesn't specify the time, I learned today that it's th always 350. It's, it's called the user-friendly temperature. That's, That's right. Good. That's it. Okay. Sprinkle some uh, bacon. Some bacon, and why don't you take some more of that cheese and sprinkle it on top? It's going to be a beautiful thing. And you know, I think our sous chefs did a great job on putting all these ingredients together. And if you look at all those jalapenos in there, this is going to be one, one spicy al caliente, uh, you know, cornbread. All right. Well, there's a, we left some seeds in there, so it should be pretty spicy. Should be very, very lively. Okay. okay. Then for the first 45 minutes of the baking, or 35 minutes of the baking, we're going to cover it with tinfoil. Tin now, if you would, where's that uh, vegetable spray? It's right over there. Spray this because if we don't, the cheese will tend to stick to it. So just around in here in the center area. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Oh, okay. You should move your hand a little faster. Oh. Okay. No, give me. I can try again. No, it's all right. Okay. Okay, if you would, Allison, open the uh, top oven door. Top oven. Okay. And we'll put it right there on the top rack. All right, and it's all set to go. So you can put a skillet in the oven, too. Yes. It's one of those things that goes from the uh, cooktop to the oven. And then the neat thing about it is you can even you can bring it out on a uh, cooling rack when it's done, let it cool somewhat, and serve it on the table right there in your nice... Uh, you know, iron skillet. Okay, so we'll be back in 35 minutes to check on it. I know you've been waiting all day for this. All you know, day. It's only I'm half excited. an hour though. We got our Mexican style cornbread out of the oven, cooled it off, Ooh. we're ready to slice it and serve. What oh, so it's ready? I'm it's ready, ready to eat. Yeah. I, I'm always ready. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Do you remember what, we, what went into it? Jalapenos. Right. Cheddar cheese. Right. Cornmeal. Flour. And we had more cheese. What and bacon. Oh, bacon. What makes it rise? All baking powder. That's right. And some other stuff? Uh, you got the cheese, you got the jalapenos, you got bacon. Um, no, I think that was it. No, wait a minute. Remember, we had diced red onions. Oh, okay. that and should we, be good. And we put a little thyme in there when we were sauteing oh, the Oh, when you sauteed right. then we did that over here. That's correct. We had our sous chefs help us with that. Right? Yes. You can't, you have to have the sous chefs. Oh, you couldn't, you couldn't have a kitchen without sous chefs mm -mm. and prep cooks and all that sort of stuff. And all that. But you also need us and executives. And most important of all, chefs. most important of all, the dishwasher. Yes. Right. I have friends of mine who have their own restaurants who tell everybody else in the restaurant, don't mess with the dishwasher. The dishwasher comes before you. Oh. So that's a very important job. That is. Okay, so here we go. Is that my right. job? Uh, could be. Could be? Could be. Yeah. Okay, hi. Now, what do you think? That looks good. You want to take a bite? Sure. If it's any good. Can do you just pick it up or? Sure. Kind of like a. Mmm. Oh, good. You like it? Mm hmm. Does it a little spicy? A little spicy. A little, yeah. little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we put a lot of jalapeno yeah. in it. Remember the one Sue, the Sue uh, chef got carried away with the uh, with mm. the jalapeno. Well, mm -hmm. Really good. No. Bring your eyes water. Yeah. Okay, Mexican style cornbread, our gourmet dish of the day. Yeah? Yeah, I think I need to go get some milk because that was a little spicy, but thank you for tuning in. I'm Allison Greiner, and this is Chef John Lewis, and this is the Gourmet Dish of the Day. And we may be back sometime. We may be. If you recover. If I recover. Okay.
So yeah, I'm talking to you. You did it right, cause you were late for school. And now you're feeling tired, falling asleep in your seat. I can't concentrate and relate, cause you're being sitting there wonder why you're feeling sway. It's cause you didn't eat the most important meal of the day. Breakfast! There's no doubt about it. Breakfast! You can't go without it. Eat a good breakfast and you'll do your best. You'll be sharp as a pencil when you take that test. You gotta eat right, you gotta eat right. You gotta eat right. Kids Can Cook 2 is originally produced and broadcast to serve the educational and informational needs of children in grades 7 through 12. Hi, I'm Jordan Baker. And I'm William Alden. And today we're going to make peanut butter and banana sandwiches. The first two ingredients you have are the peanut butter and the nicely sliced banana sandwiches. Now you want them not too thick so you can lay them down easily and have more. Now, for you people who, you know, want something unordinary instead of normal bread, we have raisin bread here, which is definitely what I like to say, the touch. What you want to do is, first of all, of course, put the peanut butter on. Okay. And normally, um, remember people, you know, you, you want to put a lot of peanut butter, but remember, it's the normal serving of two tablespoons. Now, the next thing you want to do is put on the banana slices. The banana, you'd want to peel it, of course, from the top to the bottom, and then now, sometimes people, you wouldn't like the ends, um, so both times you could just go ahead and cut off the ends. Now, the normal size of about the bananas that we slice is a little less than half an inch. And you don't have to use creamy peanut butter. If you don't like it, you can just use crunchy. We're cutting it from corner to corner instead of just half. And now we're cutting it into quarters so you can share it with people if you're having a little house party or any type of thing that you want to do. And there you have it, a freshly made banana peanut butter sandwich. And don't forget that raisin bread. Thank you very much. My name is Caitlin McLean, and we're here today to learn how to make a crunchy vegetable burrito banditos. Today we're going to be using one half cup shredded carrots, one half cup chopped broccoli, one half cup chopped cauliflower, two green onions thinly sliced, four ounces shredded low fat cheddar cheese, one fourth cup non fat ranch salad dressing. One half teaspoon chili powder, four seven inch flour tortillas, and one cup torn iceberg lettuce, bite sized pieces. Make sure that all the ingredients are mixed together very well and very thoroughly. We're going to be using um, a spinach tortilla. There's many other flavors, but today we chose spinach. Um, first, we're going to put a little bit of our lettuce, a little bit. Okay, next we're going to put a little bit of our mixture. Now it's time to roll it. First, you need to make sure that you roll it very tightly and that you tuck the edges under the ingredients. You need to roll it very tightly to make sure that everything doesn't fall out. Now you can put your toothpicks in, keep it together. And then you can cut it out a diagonal. Now you want to be very careful when you cut this and you have to be very careful with the knife Make sure that you don't hurt yourself. Now you put them on your plate, which I've garnished with basil, a tomato, and a slice of cucumber. This is your crunchy vegetable burrito banditos, and it only took about 15 minutes. This is a very healthy vegetable wrap that you can make at home just by yourself. Looks like Josh is having a hard time sleeping. 
Well, let's talk about the digestive system to see what's going on. When Josh smelled that sandwich, his digestive juices started churning in his stomach. They knew the food was coming. Took that first bite, digestion starts up. It takes merely six seconds to get from the throat down to the stomach. Stomach is turning away because it's ready for that food. From there, it goes to the intestines. All of the minerals are taken out for the body to use. And a mere 30 hours later, that sandwich is history. The next time, Josh, don't eat so late at night because your stomach is up working. I'm Jordan Baker. And I'm Amelia Malden. And today we're going to make a tuna pita pocket. This is half a pita pocket, and it's white bread, but you can get it in whole wheat. This is mayonnaise. You can get it in reduced calories. This is tuna from a can. You have to drain it first. And this is coleslaw mix. Now we're going to mix it all together. Here you go, Jordan. Problem? You gotta mix it up real good. And once it's all mixed up, you can put it in your pita. You gently wanna open your pita because it might break. Okay, now you just fill it up. And there you go, your healthy tuna pita pocket made in less than two minutes. Hey, Josh here, and I got my friend Hand with me, and today we're going to show you how to make a blue hamster sandwich. Now, I know it sounds weird, but I came up with this when I was like six years old, and it's just stayed with me ever since. It's so good and so easy. Now, all you're going to need is some nice months, and wait, I'm sure you've washed your, um, well, yourself, right? Good. We've got some nice thinly sliced Munster cheese, and then some nice black forest ham. And then we've got some pickles. I'm using bread and butter, but you could use dill or whatever type you like, just so long as they're sliced. Then about three tablespoons of mayonnaise, and then whatever bread of your choice. Just make sure it's a pretty big piece of bread. So our first step is we took a cookie cutter and, well, do you have that, the cookie cutter? There we go. We took a cookie cutter with our favorite design, and we just pre-cut some of our things, like our bread, and our cheese, oh, excuse me, ham. Some of our cheese. And then we cut some of our ham out too, but let's see. I like it a bit fresher than that, so we'll just go ahead and cut some of that out here. Fold it over in half so you can get that second piece if your ham is big enough. Then you're just gonna push down kinda hard. Oh, there we go. And then you can see, just Peel the outside of the ham away from your design. There you go. And you can repeat for as much ham as you'd like, or as much cheese as you like. So you're going to take your first piece of bread, you're going to lay that out, then take our piece of cheese, put that out, and then now for the special ingredients gonna take about four drops of blue food coloring. Now, stay with me, all right? And you're gonna mix this in with your about three, uh, three tablespoons of your mayonnaise. So one, there, a little bit more, that should be good. Now, this is why it's called the blue hamster, because you got, you know, your blue mayonnaise, then you've got your ham for your hamster, and then Munster cheese, so I just, I don't know, I was six and, being creative in the kitchen. Yeah. And there's all kinds of fun little things. And it doesn't have to be blue, it can be green, red, yellow, whatever color you like. I like blue because it makes your teeth look all weird. So once you've got that mixed up, you can take a little bit of that blue mayonnaise. Look at that. Just kind of spread it along. There we go. Nice and even. And then a pickle right in the center. And voila, 
And that's good eating, isn't it, Han? That's it for today. Hey, Josh here, and today I'm going to show you how to make some easy fruit popsicles. Basically, what you're going to start out doing, pick your favorite fruits that you like, cherries, peaches, apricots, bananas, and then you're going to smush them up with your fingers in like a plastic bowl or something. Just make sure you get all the seeds out, get all the peel out. Then you're going to put them in like a popsicle tray. If you don't have one, you can use an ice cube tray, and then you're going to put toothpicks in them. We've used kebab sticks, and freeze them in the freezer overnight. And then, the next day, you'll have these beautiful popsicles like we have here. Now, to defrost them, to make it a bit easy, take some warm water, slightly hot water, set the popsicles in there for about a minute or two, and then, voila, got perfect popsicles. Don't forget to wear protective clothing such as aprons and always wear closed toe shoes. Wash your hands before and after cooking. Be careful of sharp edges caused by the can opener when throwing away lids from the cans. Skip supersized portions. Kids really need kid sized servings. Even too much of healthy foods can add up to more calories than we need. Soft cheeses will grate more easily if cold. Pop them into the freezer for a few minutes before grating. Eating foods that are high in sugar and drinking a lot of caffeine can make you tired. You may get a quick boost of energy at first, but the effect is only temporary and you're likely to crash and feel more tired than you were before.